Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stop Searching, Start Finding, Using Your Brain for File Management. My name is Shelley Hayduck, and I'm co-hosting today's event with Matt Caton, our Director of Customer Solutions. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. All right. Today's session is all about creating a complete information network for all your files. But before we do, uh, I think it's impro important to level set and kind of uh, go back to where we started and why uh, a lot of businesses uh, that are dealing with uh, a lot of information are sort of in the trouble today where people are searching through multiple folder directories and so forth. Um, so we're going to go a bit, a bit back in time just to, to, to discuss that history. And uh, the file folder system has been around a while. And unfortunately, you would think with new clouding repositories like Google Docs, uh, Dropbox, or SharePoint, um, that that might have uh, left us. But it's actually still there. We've just replicated the same hierarchical paradigm on the cloud, in our databases, wherever we happen to be. So let's, let's talk about that. In 1886, Henry Brown invented the filing cabinet, known then as a receptacle for storing and preserving paper. Um, it was something that really revolutionized rec record keeping. So um, we do owe a lot of thanks to Henry Brown, but unfortunately, um, the limitations of that system is all about organization based on separation. So if we need to clean things up and put things away, it's fabulous. So, you know, I've got papers, which I put in a folder, and then maybe another folder, and then those folders can in turn go into, you know, this folder. And so here they are uh, neatly organized like that. Now the desktop system mimics this folder. Now the only issue I have with this is once I put this physical paper in this folder, I have another folder here on my desk, I can't really put it in this one. I have to make a choice. Um, the paradigm on your desktops also offers that. Um, so if you look for instance here at my eSolutions, uh, my, my folder system, I've got a, uh, an area for a company called eSolutions. I've got clients. I have open my clients folder. And I've got some very uh, distinct categories. Now, I have clients that fit across all these categories. And yes, I could place shortcuts uh, within each folder to go back to another folder. But I can't really see, you know, what client is, is is within multiple categories. So in essence, multi-dimensional categorization breaks down uh, when we're dealing with the file folder hierarchy. Um, now before we get into how we're solving this problem, uh, Matt, I know you have some opinions on, on this very subject of, of filing cabinets and information organization. So uh, I want you to chime in here, and then we'll jump into uh, the future of the brain. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure you've seen my I Heart Henry Brown t-shirt before, and that is because, of course, I'm a huge fan of Henry Brown. Here's my filing cabinet, and uh, it's nice. very useful. It stores my plants and my most recent reading literature, as you can see, and inside is really just a treasure trove of all types of tools and, uh, and cords. There we are, tools and cords and um, old passports that have expired. You never know when you'll need them again. All kinds of little treasures here. The one thing that I obviously do not keep in my filing cabinet are files. So all the files and folders that I have go with me on my computer. It's really hard to take that filing cabinet in your taxi and on an airplane. So obviously we're all on the computers now, but as Shelley has explained, the file and folder system on your computer is no different than the filing cabinet that's behind me. And that's why everything now goes into my brain. And I've got some great examples to share with you today on different information sources that can all come together and be displayed um, in relative context with the brain as well. All right, great. Well, very, very nice. Uh, like the plant, uh, interested in seeing some of those old passports, but that's not for today's <laughs> webinar. So with that, uh, I'm going to uh, close this folder system and open 
uh, the brain, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, 2016 methodologies of organizing information that involve networking and uh, organization by connection rather than separation. Uh, so pieces of information in the brain are what we call thoughts. And a thought can represent any type of digital information. Um, it can also be connected to anything else. So by representing uh, information, including your files, as thoughts, this enables us to sort of rise above the physical location of where this, these information assets happen to be stored. So I've just gone into the business section of my brain and I'm going to click on clients. So you can see here, I've clicked on clients, here's clients in my file folder system. Just to kind of give you a sense of ba uh, level setting, you know, what this would look like on your computer, here's what it looks like in the brain. Now we haven't really gotten to too many multi-dimensional connections, but um, what's interesting is you can see each thought can have a color, a special icon, so here you can see I've got uh, some thought types for the travel industry, some thought types for VIP clients, so just right off the bat, there's uh, even just visually, even if we are mimicking a hierarchy, um, you know, things start to look a lot better with visualization softwares like the brain, so, and I also want to, you know, uh, give Henry Brown an, an information taxonomy its, it's, it's dues because I also want to be clear in letting you know as you start to build your brain you certainly will build a hierarchy um, you know sort of uh, top level categories then uh, subordinate categories and so forth just like you can see here we have the uh, active thought above it we have the parent category so you can almost look like you could imagine that clients is a folder and then under clients is all sort of these subfolders or pieces of information so this is what we call you know the parent child relationship um, so in that sense um, you know we're not uh, you're not going to, to lose your orientation in the brain. There are some very important uh, similarities that, and the brain does enable you to map out information hierarchies. But what makes us different, I'm going to go ahead and click on Time Warner, a client uh, in, in this brain, and clicking on any thought, of course, triggers all related pieces of information. So that dynamic reconfiguration where I'm clicking on a thought pieces of information that appear, that enables us to uh, give you that multi-dimensional categorization to display everything that's connected um, very easily uh, because it's not a fixed display um, like your file folder system or even like a lot of traditional mind maps. So that's where we're very different um, and it's going to make your information access very powerful. So in this particular example, what you can see is uh, we have uh, anything, again, uh, displayed above my active thought are parents. Rather than having the one uh, Time Warner nestled in maybe my client's folder or in marketing or customer relationship management, because that's the service that we do with Time Warner, it all, I can have it effectively organized and located in all those areas. Um, so that's kind of the nice thing. So one piece of information can be stored in multiple locations. Now below that we have, lo and behold, we've got files here. So Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, Excel, um, we can have links to websites. On the thought itself I also have a Word document and you can see I've got the number six on it indicating I've got six documents attached to the thought. So again, and this is really where, uh, let me just go ahead and close this and let's start to get into, uh, you know, the network oriented world of file management in the brain. Um, I think what we're going to talk to you about today is the power of associative connection in conjunction with your files as well as metadata. Very nice ways to annotate and provide additional information on those files. So um, for, and to that end, in addition to the visual display, I would like to show you our tool tabs area here where each thought has a note and of course I can see the files that are attached um, to my active thought. And this is always relative to my active thought. So for instance, if I click on my 2015 Time Warner uh, presentation, you can see I've got two documents and a note, and, and by the way, notes are fabulous for jotting down ideas, but in the context of files, 
I love, you know, making a little note on, well, this file isn't ready or this needs this or that. Um, so, you know, often you, you write something and you just want to annotate, you know, why it was written or which version, version to use. The notes area is just fabulous for that. So in this case, um, I've used the notes section here to indicate that version 5 is actually the one to send because it's, it's the one that legal approved even though we're working on future versions so um, that's a great area if you're a writer it's great to cut copy and paste key aspects of the of your document in notes that you want to kind of repurpose for text and of course I can open any one of these documents so let me just go ahead and click on version 5 and here's this company profile um, where these documents are stored each uh, thought in the brain has a folder. Um, it's just a unique folder and you can pull them up this way. I can drag and drop out of the brain if for some reason I wanted to take version 7 of my Time Warner document out of this area. I can do that. Now you can see I have five versions in there. Um, you know, I can drag and drop back in. So it's very easy um, to access existing pieces of information. Um, now, you'll also notice that I have some lateral connections with link types. So, in addition to my documents, I can uh, associatively connect pieces of information that are relevant. So, here I can see that Fred is an advisor for Time Warner. And if I click on Fred, I can then see, you know, other things that he's working on. Um, but this is really nice and helpful because this is going to enable me to go ahead and create a complete network for information. So um, the other thing I can do is, of course, I can move very quickly to find information by using search. So I'm going to go, I just typed in the first couple letters, red, and I'm going to move to my red cross area. And in this particular uh, uh, client, I'm actually going to create a, a new customer service project. So I'm just dragging from the little circle that we call the gate. Now the first thing I might want to do is actually create a new piece of information in the brain. So for that I'm simply going to right click on that thought and add an attachment. So I'm going to add a Microsoft Word document. This is going to launch a new document with the name, the file name being the name of the thought. And here are our goals for this project. Okay, and I don't have to worry about where I'm saving it. I can just hit save and that's going to save back internally. Let me close this document back into the brain and from here I can continue to uh, grow and uh, integrate existing information. So first of all I've got other information on my desktop. So if I go to uh, my projects, I can see that um, I actually have the uh, client presentation that we did for this customer service project. I want to get that into the brain. So all I have to do is simply drag and drop and you can see what it's done is it's actually gone ahead and created a shortcut to where this presentation is on my desktop. Now a couple things. Uh, the default for drag and drop is to um, to create shortcuts, but once that document's there, I can simply uh, right click to move this file or copy it into the brain. And since this area is getting very messy, I'm going to move that. Um, now I can use the brain in the same way I would a folder. So if I want to copy a bunch of folders, or I'm sorry, a bunch of files in my brain. So for instance, let me just collect, uh, select the uh, client proposal and also the training resources we need for this and then our West Coast rollout plan. I'm just going to select all three of those documents, right click and select to copy them and now I'm going to go back to my brain and right click to paste these uh, files as well. So now you can see I've started to populate this area very nicely uh, with the brain. And the other thing that's great about that is uh, of course I can start to link my new documents to other related pieces of information. So this new customer service project, this also falls under uh, 
customer relationship management, a services industry, so I want to make a connection there. So now I can get to it by the client we're serving, but also by customer relationship management. And then I see that Brigitte is an expert in this area, so I actually think that what I want to do is I'm probably going to go back to this new customer service project and link Brigitte. And so I can do it by linking to her in the past thought list just by making a connection like that. Or I can uh, link this way, release my mouse bu button, and just start typing in the first couple letters, and there we have it, and make a connection there. So now things are starting to get contextualized. Things are starting to look like the world that I'm operating in as opposed to a single file. So I can see the client that we're doing this for. I can see the service sector and the service industry. Uh, I've linked the project manager here as a jump thought. And I've got my documents here as well. Um, so it's, it's all pretty uh, nice in the brain. Now, part of this customer service project is we have to make a uh, customer survey. So we're doing some customer survey development. So I'm just going to create this thought. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go utilize the brain's built-in search web feature and actually go out to the web to get information. And the reason I want to show you how to integrate um, URLs is because a lot of your information, and Matt's actually going to dive into this uh, quite a bit deeper in his segment, is online. You might want to link a Google Doc. You might have a link to something in Salesforce.com or even Microsoft SharePoint. So what is important for you to know is your brain is going to act as sort of a visual remote control to fetching all the relevant information. All you have to do is link to it, link to it or move it in. So uh, in this case, for instance, a um, couple nice, uh, there's a keysurvey.com site that does different, uh, you know, we can potentially utilize them. So let me drag and drop them as a possible vendor for this project. And so what that does is it creates a link, and the label and the name of the website are sometimes different, so you can see there, so I can just hit this little button to switch them, and that shows me that I'm, that's key survey. And I can just go back and drag and drop anymore. So there's another interesting um, how to design an effective survey. I like that. I still want to put this under my customer survey development. So I'm simply dragging from the browser address window and dropping into my brain. So I've got another nice piece of information. Uh, you know, I can also utilize the notes to highlight anything in that URL that I want. So for instance, um, there's uh, a nice uh, insight on listing assumptions and sharpening questions. And I like the, that's, those are kind of two principles we'll want to follow when we're developing our uh, survey. So I'm simply just going to copy those ideas and paste them into my notes area. So now I've got that piece of note, uh, that note right under the course that's going to, that has more information. That's very helpful as well. So that's another great use of, of notes and annotations. So here, and if I mouse over, you can see I've got that note appearing. Um, of course, I can go ahead and add a icon. So there's our customer survey development area. And I'm just going to drag and drop one more piece of information. Uh, let me just go ahead and grab something about from Survey 101, Survey Monkey, and again, dragging and dropping that into the brain. So now you see how quickly it is that I can move different pieces of information into the brain. Now, um, I can ha I can do create new information, I can drag and drop. I can also grab folders. So just to show you how that works, let me go ahead and go and get, let's say we're looking at our training resources and staffing, and I want to get my staffing folder. I can simply drag and drop that into the brain. And what that does as well is that creates a shortcut to where that folder is outside of my brain here. So for instance, staffing, if I click on that and I launch that, I get access to all that information. So uh, for a lot of you struggling with large file drives that you, you can't really change where the location of the data is, um, this is a nice way just to go ahead 
and put that in actually the staffing folder, I can connect it. Maybe that makes sense to put it under, you know, the human resources area as well. So uh, I can go ahead and, uh, and put that under human resources. So now I've got the staffing folder here in addition to my new uh, customer service project. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and forget this folder because um, there's something else that I can do. If I just want the uh, link to the folder, I can drag and drop. But the other thing I can do is I can do a full folder import. So uh, I have this folder here sitting on my desktop, IT management, and it's got four other subfolders that are relevant to my project. I'd like to integrate those into the brain as well. So the way I do that is I can actually go up to File, and that's in File, and select Import. And I have a, a number of things that I can import, including other mind mapping files, word outlines, IE favorites, XML, if we want to get into that. But what I want to do is I just want to select a folder for import. And what this is going to do is actually move this information into the brain. So it's going to let me kind of browse. I actually want to select this IT management folder. I'm going to hit save, and now following option cannot be undone. Do I want to proceed? Absolutely. Let's hit yes, and now it's importing all six directories, 14 files, and two URL shortcuts. And so you can see um, this is IT management now. And the thing that also is quite interesting here is, you know, I just want to compare, so my IT management here versus here, and here are my department budgets. Now in this case, it's got my department budget, and it's got them all attached. So um, you can see the number four there. So I've got the four attachments for that folder. So basically each folder, subfolder that is in a folder import gets a thought and um, you know additional content here. So engineering had three things. Now, um, whether you attach multiple attachments per thought, or a single attachment per, per thought, that is up to you. The trick that I usually follow is if it's versions, I like to have multiple versions per thought, but if it is a separate document with a distinct idea, that might warrant its own thought. So for instance here, I've done this department budgets uh, thought, uh, imported this uh, folder. It's got four different unique budgeting, budget spendings, but they're all attached to a single thought. So if I want to move these uh, attachments to create separate thoughts, that's very easy as well. I can simply drag up, and that's actually dragging them out of the thought, and enabling them to have their own unique thoughts. So now you can see these budgets um, are very much um, their own thoughts and you know conversely I can have multiple attachments there as well and maybe the real budget that's going to influence our project is the new tech spending so I actually want to go ahead and put that one uh, right underneath my customer service project right there so I've got my new tech spending budget there and you know all this other stuff on IT management uh, you know, this actually belongs under engineering, so I'm going to make a connection to engineering and put IT management there. So you can see now how instead of having this isolated just on my desktop, I'm starting to connect and assimilate that information, integrate that information uh, into my own world. And let me just go back to that customer service project. Now, the other thing that I want to talk to you about is, is saving as and version control in the brain. So uh, I've got a client proposal here that is an internal document. Um, again, it's stored internally in this uh, drive or folder in the brain. I'm going to launch it actually doesn't really have anything, so I'm just going to go ahead and say client proposal new idea. So let's say I want to save this as a separate version, version 2. So what I can do is I can go to file, hit save as, and uh, it's actually the current folder is what's going to show you, and this is the, the brain folder because it's in your my brains and files, and each brain folder has to 
identification. I click on that and now I'm just going to change the file name to version 2. So you can see that this bray, this thought has one document in there and now I'm going to save this as version 2 and hit save and close this and now I've got two versions of that file in this brain. So you can see how that works nicely as well. So um, you can continue to do that if I wanted to open this document again and then save as a third version, um, that's also pop, uh, possible as well. So all that can come together very nicely. Now just a word about whether you're storing your documents locally or um, creating shortcuts. Um, now if you want to synchronize your information to our cloud so you can access these files on your phone, on your iPad, on another machine, then um, we do recommend that you store these files internally. Now you can copy them. You can also adjust your preferences. So if I right click on the background and select preferences, if I go into UI, again that's preferences and UI, on drag and drop of files, uh, rather than link, you can change this to move. And that's actually, that's very similar to the way it works when you're dragging and dropping from a different folder. Rather than making a shortcut, it moves that. So that's something that, especially if you're using synchronization, um, you want to think about doing. So do keep that in mind. The other option here um, that is the opposite of that is virtual thoughts for folders. Now virtual thoughts um, they don't synchronize because they're actually relying on the hard drive or the folders they're pointing to. But where they're quite interesting and relevant is for um, an, or maybe a business manager who is constantly using a shared file drive um, that is uh, on the company network and legal keeps creating new folders and you want them in your brain. Then you can actually create what we call virtual thoughts for folders. I'm going to check this and show you what that does. So virtual thoughts, um, all that means is when I drag and drop a folder, so let me drag and drop this IT management folder again, so you can see. So in this case, it is a virtual thought, so that's why it is a purple, and the brain is very clear, it shows you virtual thought. And in this case, what it does is it has, I have my virtual thought for each of these, uh, folders. Now the other thing I can do is I can actually come to this this folder and add a new uh, category or new a new folder in this. So let's just call this um, 2016 IT planning and add that in the brain. And what you'll notice is because this um, virtual thought is set up to go ahead and constantly look at that folder, this new folder that was created outside of the brain gets updated in the brain. So very interesting, although I do only recommend this in the cases where you are reliant on um, you know, a third party file drive that's getting updated. Um, very, again, for people who have extensive company networks uh, file drive. This is this is fabulous. So when you just come to this area, you don't have to, you know, drag and drop or create a shortcut to anything else. It's right here. Um, so that's the uh, the difference. So you can see we've done the virtual thought of IT management folder, or we've done the full import where you have more control and these documents are internal and they'll stick. So as to what protocol is right for you, it really depends on your unique needs and requirements. And I think with that, we've sort of covered the basics on file management. Matt, unless there's any questions, uh, let's keep the momentum going and I'm going to pass presenter over to you so you can cover even more uh, data sources. Great. Thank you very much. Happy to do that. And the data sources that I am covering today, let me go ahead and share my screen here. The data sources I am covering today are from all those online uh, resources that we have access to these days. There's Dropbox, there's OneNote, there's Evernote, there's so many. And quite often, I face this myself and we hear this from a lot of different brain users, there's so many different accounts. No two departments sometimes even utilize the same methodology of file sharing and, and file distribution. 
So even in one environment, you're receiving files from Evernote and your accounting department is sending you something from Dropbox where your engineers have something stored in, um, in Google Drive. And you might not have accounts in all of those, and you've got to keep all of that information in order um, and accessible when you're working on different projects. So I'm going to go ahead and open up some of these different information sources and bring them right into the brain. And I think really uh, the key about these information sources is that everything has a URL. And it's so easy to drag and drop a URL from your default browser right into the brain to uh, save a link to a website that references the project you're working on or a hobby that you're interested in or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to go ahead and start with, let me open up my browser, and I'm going to start with Dropbox. Now this is the online version of Dropbox. With Dropbox, obviously you have a local folder, and I think I have that open here as well. So there's my Dropbox folder, as you can see. And everything that I put into my Dropbox folder on my local machine, when Dropbox synchronizes, that's going to be accessible to me online. So right from this location, I can grab this getting started, drag and drop, and make a shortcut to my Dropbox folder. Or I can right click and go into find out who this file is shared with. Um, open it locally, obviously, or more importantly, share the Dropbox link. So I click on share Dropbox link and I come over into the brain and when I right click, I have a web link to that getting started PDF. And that's the link that is available online. So in my brain, I've created a link to the web version of this getting started document. So I can click and launch and you can see it's opening my browser with that getting started document. I'm going to come back to Dropbox now, and you can see it's very easy right from my Dropbox account to every time I hover over something, uh, here's a letter to the publisher that I need. I click on share, and there's that URL. So once again, I can copy that information and right-click in the brain and paste web link. Now I can paste on an existing thought, so I can right click on an existing thought if I want the attachment there. You've been seeing me right clicking below the active thought, and that actually creates a new child thought, and Dropbox is really nice because the actual document is the name of the thought. So I don't have to change anything. I know that's the letter to the publisher that I need for this project that I'm working on for this client. So let's go ahead and grab another door to my browser, and this time OneDrive. And again, the same process, and I've got a few different options. Here's a project overview document. Um, I can right click to quite simply get the link. Now it's a little bit different with uh, OneDrive. I click to get the link, and I'll copy that link onto my clipboard, and right click in my brain to paste the web link. But notice, it's going to rename the thought here in just a moment. There it is. And it just simply named it Google Docs. So all of your Google Docs, the online version is named Google Docs. They like to do a little branding, I think. But that's not a problem. I can click on the thought. And here, let me get a little side-by-side -side view going. So the brain on the right, my information sources on the left. So this was the project overview that I'm working on. So I can click on F2 to adjust uh, that name. F2 is a keyboard shortcut for renaming a, a thought, and I can rename that to Project Overview. So no problem. I can also right-click and select to rename the thought, rename edit, or rename it down in the Thought Tool tab. So a lot of different renaming options for the, uh, the content and the thought. Um, and then finally, I'd also like to show that if you open a document, and here I've got the project overview document actually open, again, you can simply drag and drop. So if you've already opened it, I can drag and drop that right into the brain. Again, it names it Google Docs, uh, but now I've got two copies. I'm going to go ahead and forget that. So I'll right click to forget that thought. But again, if you've got the document open and you're seeing the URL, it's a drag and drop or from a, an account page. This is the same on Dropbox or here on uh, OneDrive. I can right click and always find that share link or uh, the, the uh, lingo in OneDrive is get link. I've got that link on my clipboard and I paste it right into my brain. And once again, no different from 
Uh, here we are in Evernote. I can right click, so website accounts, I can right click on that thought to, uh, and actually uh, on, on Evernote we can't copy from here. I'm just reviewing. No, so we actually have to, uh, to open that and drag and drop it in. So I'll just drag and drop. A little bit easier actually. So there's no right click to get it, but uh, once again, I do need to rename. So notice that Evernote uh, named it Welcome Back. I'll come back and name this Web Accounts. So with drag and drop, but with Evernote, if you are viewing the desktop version, for some reason there, we're able to pick up the name, no problem. So here, let me minimize this just a little bit so you can see both on the screen. So here I've got this Cedar Rapids on-site visit. I can just uh, right click. From here, I can right click on the desktop version of Evernote, and I go into Share and select to copy the Share URL or to uh, copy Note Link. So a few different options to get the Note Link right there from Evernote. And I think that one just isn't publicly accessible yet. Let me try clicking on this one. Right click Share. There it is, Share URL. And I right click and paste. So when I do it this way, it actually does, I've noticed, pick up the, uh, the thought name properly. So they're named properly from that link. And the naming convention is not up to the brain. The brain doesn't look at the document and decide how to actually name that. Each URL that you bring in from any website, they typically have a title tag. And it's what shows up in the little tab uh, in a tabbed view uh, browser. And that is what the brain is always going to use for the thought name for any URL. So um, again, if it's being named something like Welcome Back or Google Docs, something to that effect, that's because that's what Google Docs have named their title tags for those, uh, those web pages. But again, just very easy to, uh, to rename that content. And finally, one last component to share with you. We've brought in a few different dis uh, disparate information sources. So we've got our Dropbox items, um, Google Drive, Evernote. Um, actually, I saw it come up on the questions, and I'll just answer this ahead of time. OneNote, uh, OneNote, very popular and um, and very easy. Once again, right here from the desktop application, to grab a URL to do anything within OneNote, whether it's a graphic or a paragraph or the whole page or a notebook, everything has a URL. So here I am, just in a paragraph um, uh, in uh, one of my documents, and I right click. And I can, as you can see, copy the link specifically to this paragraph. So on a long scrolling uh, note in OneNote, you can go directly to a specific location, sort of a, a nice advantage with OneNote. So I can copy the link to the paragraph. I can also right click on the tabs up above and notice there I'm copying the link to the section. So I either get the entire section that starts at the top of the page or an individual paragraph or a notebook. I think these are called notebooks over on the right. So I right click over here. Uh, no, that's still section. There's a book. Right click, copy link to notebook. So I get the entire notebook link. I'll copy that. And once again, in the brain, right click and paste that web link. So it's going to take me directly to that specific item in OneNote uh, for this particular link. And then finally, I also have Outlook open. And uh, Outlook, we've got some interesting integration with Outlook. From Outlook, uh, when I drag and drop an Outlook item right into the brain, and here I've got sort of a, you know, a nice layout for potentially a, uh, an email flyer that we're going to do. They've got nice graphics. I want to emulate this particular website and review this with my design team to see if we can create something similar. So I'll just drag and drop this right into the brain. It creates a new child thought with a link back to that email. But also notice, I'm going to go ahead and activate this thought. And uh, let me just open up my tool tabs down below. Here in the notes section, I've got all the text. And look, there's even the graphics uh, for that email address. So I don't have to launch Outlook and wait for it to, to load and, and log in and so forth. I've got, you know, if I'm just after the text in that email, that'll show up right there for me in the notes section. And that's a unique integration that we have just with Outlook. So when you drag and drop those Outlook emails, 
you'll get that content uh, appearing there in the notes section. And then finally, one, one last thing I do want to point out with these different information sources, there's a lot of different privacy settings. You noticed on one thought, I couldn't get to the link because it wasn't shared publicly yet. Different um, uh, sources um, act in different ways. If you can get an online link to a particular thought, but it is not shared publicly, you may have noticed in Notebook, uh, or in, in OneNote rather, let me go back to OneNote. Um, on OneNote, um, a lot of these were not shared publicly yet. I'm the only one that has access uh, to these particular items so, for, so far. Actually, it was uh, being displayed here in my Dropbox. So right click and I go to share with, notice I'm sharing this with nobody. I'm the only one that has access. So what that means is just because you are the only one with access, when you put it into your brain and sync your brain to the cloud, if you have not logged in yet to the online version of Dropbox or OneNote, um, you'll simply be prompted with the login screen. So just because you share your screen doesn't mean you've given access to everyone that uh, has access, excuse me, I said just because you shared your screen. Just because you've shared your brain doesn't mean you've given immediate access to all the documents inside your brain. If you are linking to OneNote, Dropbox, and so forth, and you've got those set as private, when someone else opens your brain because you've given them access brain and they launch that attachment, they'll be prompted to log in with your account information, which they won't have, and therefore that document is still protected. So I'm already logged into my Dropbox and OneNote and so forth, so that's why these attachments automatically open for me in the browser without prompting me to log in. Uh, but if I was not logged in yet, then I would get the, uh, the prompt here before this document loaded up. And let's go ahead and talk about that now. It's a nice transition into sharing your brain. And I know this came up quite a bit in the question panel about how to take this local version of your brain and actually share it with others. Um, and that's how I like to share my documents. I'm not sending people links to OneNote and, and Dropbox and so forth. I'm sending people to specific thoughts in a brain that I've made publicly accessible for them to access. And that's how I share uh, these large files that won't fit in an email or I don't want to clog up an email with 10 or 20 documents for a project I'm working on. I want to send my colleagues a link directly to that thought in the brain that I have online. So now Shelly mentioned earlier that links in your brain can either be shortcuts, copied, or internal. Copied and, and uh, moved documents. Those are internal attachments in the brain, and those will go up, uh, will be uploaded to the brain cloud when you sync your brain. So I'm going to go ahead and sync my brain now, and I just click on the sync button. You can also click on online and select sync with web brain. So this is now syncing all the changes that I've made here locally to my brain on the cloud. So let's go ahead and open up my cloud account, and you can go directly to webbrain.com or on our website, www.thebrain.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, there is a login button for you to log in to your account. So all of your online brains are now accessible to you through the web. So I'm in the web interface here on the left and still the desktop version there on the right. And I notice my brain sync has completed. So now I can go into my eSolutions brain. So I'll go ahead and launch that. And I'll go ahead and navigate to this area under uh, the ad campaign that I'm working on called Be a Kid Again. So if I, I could do a search, or in this case, I'll just navigate through top clients. You can see all my information is here. My notes are being displayed, and, and internal attachments are accessible down below. So I go to Disney, and there's Be a Kid Again. And here are all of my fantastic project resources, again, available to me online. And if I want to share these links or these specific thoughts with someone else, I can just right click in the background and select to share. And I can either grab the URL for this specific thought or I can grab the URL for this brain and they'll start from the very top of the brain or the, what we call the home thought of this brain and be able to navigate through the entire brain to access the information that I've made publicly accessible to them. Now, once again, just rolling back a little bit, 
the brains that you put online are not automatically accessible to the entire world. Obviously, we do have some privacy settings in place, and each brain that you sync, the very first time you ever sync it, is going to be private. Only you can log in and access that brain, but if you do want to share it with others, we can go into the settings for any brain. You can do this from your account page or right here from the brain itself. And I've actually upgraded my account to Team Brain Services. Team Brain Services allow you to synchronize your brain to the cloud, share it with others as an editor. So others can be editors of the same brain. And so now we're totally collaborating. You can see Shelly, Brigitte, and Patrick have editor access to this brain so we can all add information and collaborate to, uh, to work on these projects together. Um, but there you can see I can set up uh, different status uh, levels or accessibility levels so I can keep this brain private, make it unlisted so no one can ever search and, and find the brain, or simply make it publicly accessible. And you can go to thebrain.com slash explore and actually browse through publicly accessible brains on different topics. Um, so I'll save those changes if I've made any. And once again, I can very easily right click to capture, uh, or excuse me, to synchronize this brain, my local brain, click on sync to move those changes online, or on the online version, right click to capture under the share tab, the URL for that brain, to send that brain out, tweet it out, or email a link to other people that I want to have access to this information. So with that, Shelly, I think I'll throw it back to you and see if we have any additional questions we can answer. All right. Great. Uh, we do have some questions. Let me just go ahead and get my webcam up and going. Uh, lots of uh, great information. Um, and just some questions back on dragging and dropping. Um, tips for uh, if you don't want, want to change your preferences, is there a function that lets you control click or command click just to bring that file in without creating a shortcut? And um, I think we also covered when to, a lot of questions on when to use the shortcut versus the, um, the actual file. And as you can see, the, uh, what Matt's showing you on the cloud um, kind of gives you an idea of when. So if you are synchronizing to the cloud, you're definitely going to want to store those files internally. That's right. And we do have shortcuts. Now, obviously, the, the drag and drop default creates a shortcut to the file. Shelly showed us where we can go into the UI tab in Preferences. So I click on Options and Preferences. And under the UI tab, I can set it up so that those files aren't linked by default. They're moved by default. Someone had that question on the, the question panel earlier. But also, if you don't want to change the preferences, but you do from time to time have a large group of thoughts that you need to move into the brain, and you don't want to drag and drop and then right-click, move file into the brain. That would get a little tedious. We do have some keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to grab this code examples. Drag and drop would make a shortcut, but if I hold down the control key, and on a Mac this is the, um, the alt key, you can see that con uh, code examples has actually been moved uh, an internal copy. So the original code example 33 is still there, as you can see on the left. But this is a, an internal, it's a copy. And I can look at the thought uh, tool tab down below and see that this is an internal attachment. So I did that with the control key. And then we have the control shift. And that's the same on PC as well as Mac. So here I'll grab this instructions. So control shift. And I drag and drop. And that instructions document has disappeared from its original location. And that has been moved internally in the brain. Once again, we can always go back, right-click on an attachment to move a file out of the brain, right-click on a shortcut, move a file into the brain. So you can always go back and tweak and modify any changes that you've made to the brain structure. But those keyboard shortcuts are there for you as well. All right, great. And then a question coming in from Jacques, um, covering to cover overlapping information, <clears throat> how the brain sort of reminds you of information. So. Um, one of the nice things is when you start typing in a thought, there'll be a display below where you will, oh, actually, it's also for discovery in addition to uh, avoiding duplication. So, Matt, I'll let you cover that and, and address maybe um, how to cover uh, duplication of information. That's right. You can see I just simply started typing in a, a jump thought here for my teaching workbook. I type in two letters, D-A, 
and I am presented with all thoughts that exist in my brain that contain that sequence of letters, whatever I've typed in. I'm looking for Chad Davis. There he is. I scroll down through my, uh, through my list of existing thoughts. There's Chad. And this, this is the perfect example. I don't want two thoughts for Chad in my brain in the future. I might leave his phone number on one thought but not the other. And therefore, a month or two months from now, I haven't talked to Chad for a while. He works in a different department. I need to contact him. I go to the wrong Chad Davis thought, and I don't have his information, and I'm scrambling. No, I want one thought for Chad Davis, and all the information about Chad is going to be linked to that one thought. So there's Chad, and Chad is working, on me, uh, working with me on this teaching workbooks. And if Chad isn't available, I've got some questions for him about how to handle a particular component of this document. Uh, I can see Chad reports to Mallory and the other people in his department that may have the answers for me. Let's say Chad is also working with uh, Red Cross, one of our clients, and is managing the Disney account. So I'll link him to Disney as well. Now suddenly this org chart uh, takes on all new meaning. I've got all of the people who they report to, but also what their tasks are, what I've assigned them or what they're responsible for within the organization is displayed for me right there on the screen. And again, I don't want one Chad Davis thought connected to Red Cross, a different Chad Davis thought connected to Disney, a different one connected to Teaching Workshop. Uh, that doesn't give me the big picture on what Chad's responsibilities are and where he sits within the organization. So one thought for, the, for a person, a project, a document. And then from there, I can see everything that it's related to with the brain links. All right, great. And then we have a question coming in from Roger about uh, he's just started to lay out a hit list of business development activities and um, would like to do this in the brain. But he actually likes, uh, in addition to our dynamic view, a more traditional mind map view um, to get the big picture. So what I want to make sure everyone's aware of, because we're talking a lot about linking files and dragging information, is some of our display options, because we do actually have a outline view, an expanded view. You can also put distant thoughts on. So Matt, if you want to go moving away from the file management tabs just to do a little sure. bit on just pure settings for visualization, I think that'll be helpful because everyone wants different ways to visualize their files. Absolutely. So here I've just clicked to another thought, just a random thought in this brain. I've got a nice visual. I, I can see right away where Matt, Mallory uh, fits within the organization, who it reports to Mallory, other people in her department, and her responsibilities. But what if I want to know a little bit more and see other people or other links connected to Red Cross, United Way, Benson Travel, etc.? So I'm going to make a few modifications to my brain. Now, I'm broadcasting today. Both Shelly and I were broadcasting on a lower resolution, and that's so we've just got less pixels going through the, uh, the bandwidth here. But on this lower resolution monitor, I'm still going to minimize my tool tabs down below. So there is a button in the upper right hand corner to minimize my tool tabs. Now I'm full screen with all of my interconnected thoughts. I have a feature turned on in settings where I can hover over the active thought and use my mouse wheel to make my thoughts a little bit smaller. So you can turn those features on and off if you go again back to options and into preferences on the look and, or excuse me, on the UI tab, you can turn on your mouse wheel resizing or even turn on the circle around the active thought to click and drag in and out to make your thoughts resize. So I leave it on mouse wheel so I can get a little more screen real estate, make my thoughts a little bit smaller. Here's the first view I'd like to share with you. I simply click on the plus sign up above. Now I'm viewing what we call distant thoughts. Instead of seeing one generation away from the active thought, I'm seeing two generations away from the active thought. So lo and behold, in one screen, there's Mallory, there's Bill, who I was just connected to, and now I can see his jump thoughts over my, to my teaching workshop, and that he's uh, connected to Disney. And if I hover over him, I see that he also has a link back to Red Cross. So he's very familiar with our client uh, with Red Cross as well, and other documents under United Way, United Nations, and so on. So I'm getting, starting to get a bigger picture of how all of my information fits together. Let's take it one step further. So instead of just viewing two thoughts away, I'm going to go into what we call an outline view. Now, an outline view is still a bit of a linear view of your information. So here I'll click all the way up to the VP of sales. So there's Terry. 
And under Terry, I can see Sam, the account managers, and some documents that Terry's working on. If I want to, whoops, I hit my mouse wheel there. If I want to expand and see more information about Sam, I'll click on the little plus, and now I can see the different documents, or in this case, databases, that Sam is, is currently working on. I'll expand Daniel Rhodes, so I get a little plus sign. So you notice, anytime I hover over a person's name, if there are more thoughts below, I get a plus sign. If I don't need to see who reports to Daniel Rhodes, now I've got a minus sign or a collapse, so expand and collapse. But I can choose which thoughts I want to expand, so I'll expand Fred. And again, you can see with a bigger uh, screen, more real estate, I can really get a big picture of how some information is fitting together. And then finally, let's really go to a much more expanded view, and we call that expanded view. So here's a new expanded view I'm going to create. And now it's up to me. I want Barbara thought to appear there, Daniel here. Let me move that over. Uh, here's where all my account managers will be. Sales department, I want to view that here, and I'll go ahead and expand sales as well. And uh, let's go one step further. Let's expand Fred. I know Fred has a lot of responsibilities. So let's get Fred right down here with the Red Cross client, and I can see everyone that's currently working on that account. So this is sort of a, a view of my account managers and how uh, sales and people are related to Red Cross. If there's a sales forecast, that directly has to reference what we've done uh, for our client at Red Cross, I can simply drag a, and can make a connection right here in the expanded view so I can see how everything circles back and connects together. What's really great about expanded view is I can also save these. So picture a very large brain. This brain isn't so large, maybe close to a thousand thoughts. That's not bad. But um, I've got areas of this brain that are specific about, specifically about engineering and development, other areas that are specifically about sales uh, or about client management and product updates and so forth. So I can create different views for areas of the exact same brain. So my accounting uh, manager walks into the office. We want to talk about our clients. I've got my client view. Uh, if engineering walks in, wants to talk about development, I've got my development view. So I can click on, if I go up to view, you can see I can save this expanded view, and I'll save this as Red Cross. So I've got my Red Cross view, and I can always switch back to normal. And uh, at any time someone wants to know more, or I'm stepping into a meeting specifically talking about how we're going to sort of reorganize what we're doing for this client, what we're doing for Red Cross, what's working, what isn't. I want to get right to my Red Cross view, obviously. So I click on view, load up expanded views. I've got quite a view, but there's my Red Cross view. And uh, oh, I clicked the wrong button. It didn't, uh, didn't quite go. So let me load one more expanded view. I was too, uh, too quick with the, with the mouse. There's my new client's view. That's not a very nice view, but obviously we can review, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, restructure those views. It's actually taking a little bit of time to, uh, to load up here, probably because of the, the bandwidth and the go-to meeting. But in a moment, that'll expand. And once again, I'll have easy access to those different views or be able to switch back to normal view at, at any time. All right, great. Um, so uh, we've covered a lot. Um, I just want to, a couple people earlier in the session uh, mentioned that, you know, the pace might be a, a little bit in depth on file management. So I, I do want that, to yeah. let you know um, we do offer the Brain 101, and that is every Friday. So there's a class tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern time. For that, we always start with building a brain from nothing, from ground up. And it's the pace is a little bit slower. So for those of you that are new, and I, I know there's a lot of newbies on this class, which is fabulous because now you've kind of seen the power, but you might want to like, okay, you're inspired. Let's, let's start from the beginning. Join us for that class. It's every Friday. You know, if you're late, pop in and out. Um, there, we're, we're there every Friday. <laughs> so, so come when you can. And it's, it's a great resource. Somebody also mentioned, you know, private web uh, training sessions. We do that as well, um, and they're all complimentary. However, what we do ask, especially if you're a newbie, is before we set up your private one-on-one uh, -on -one, that you attend a 101 class, so we've covered the basics, and then you're, we're just kind of talking about maybe specific issues or specific uh, visualization mapping techniques for your business processes. So um, that's the way um, 
That is. Now, let me, uh, I just want to let you know also, a lot of you asked if the session was going to be recorded. It is. You will be emailed a link and we will post it to our home page. We are coming up on the hour. However, uh, we do have uh, several more questions. So I'm going to kind of jump back into Q&A and we'll, we'll just go into overtime for about five more minutes uh, just to, to cover some questions. And one of the questions was from Tom, a very interesting question. What are your thoughts uh, for new users who have large number of existing classical folders? Use the brain with links to give the picture or start migrating folders, the files into your system. And you know what? There is no right or wrong answer to that, Tom. However, uh, the approach that we like to advise people on is actually to start with the folders that are most relevant to you. And I do suggest the import rather than the link because if you're going to be synchronizing, you will have online access and access across all your different machines and devices. Um, but I, I also want users, especially the new users out there, to um, not feel overwhelmed that everything has to go in right away uh, and resist resist that temptation. Um, what we like to do is start with your top five projects. So here are my top five projects that are keeping me up at night. I need to map those out. So take all the information from those. And to be honest, maybe some of those older, you mentioned you had a lot of classical older folders. Maybe those other ones, maybe you can survive with just a shortcut link or a virtual thought to some of the older ones. So the cool thing about the brain is we're somewhat data and agnostic. Um, you can actually do both um, for the most part, especially if you want access on your mobile devices and you're synchronizing to other users or the cloud. I totally do recommend importing the files you need. But that being said, you might have just an older directory that, hey, it's going to stay on your hard drive or it's going to stay on your network. And maybe for that, a shortcut is all you need. And I would agree with you, Shelley. I think that the import is, uh, is really the, the best option there. Um, and obviously, when you import that information in, you're not going to lose any data from that original folder structure. It will still be there. You've imported a copy of that content. Folders become thoughts, and files within those folders become file attachments on each individual thought. So uh, you can see how it looks in the brain and then re start restructuring from uh, uh, from there, but I really prefer the uh, the import feature as well. All right, great. And then uh, just a, a question on uh, as far as um, the way we actually integrate with PDF documents. We have, you can actually drag and drop a PDF. Uh, somebody asked if we could link within a PDF. The only way that can be done is if, if that's an online help system. And again, if you have a unique URL, um, which I think Matt, Matt demoed with some of these other cloud systems. So any URL um, or path can be uh, dragged and dropped into the brain. And then as far as searching PDFs and files, we have uh, you know, the, the quick search as well as the advanced search. So Matt, if you just want to spend some time, because we did talk stop searching, start finding, but you can find also by searching the contents of your documents in the brain. So and real quick, Matt, if, uh, and we'll probably – uh, close the webinar on this question if you want to cover searching within documents as well. Absolutely. Uh, the search in the brain is very powerful. Everything that is text-based is going to be indexed and therefore searchable. So if you think about that, that's your thought names, uh, labels that we assign to thoughts. We didn't talk too much about that, but you can uh, attach a label, which is a keyword or an acronym for a project or a synonym. Um, that uh, shows up in the search as well. The notes, and finally, all of your internal attachments, your shortcuts, uh, web links, and so forth. Again, if it's text-based, it is getting indexed. So I can do a search for, example, the word power. And uh, what pops up right away are all my thought matches, instant thought matches. Uh, but if I click on the search button, and let me just re- uh, shape the size of my windows here. So there you can see at the top are the five thought matches, but if I scroll down a bit, there are all of my content matches. Um, so all of the Word documents, there's a text file, there's web pages, Qualcomm, Dell.com, and so forth, um, are all showing up in the search results. So that internal uh, links, but anything text-based connected to the brain is going to be indexed. Now with a PDF, 
The one thing to keep in mind is sometimes you it looks like text, but it's actually a graphic. Uh, so that cannot be indexed. So that's a fairly rare circumstance, um, but that does happen from uh, from time to time. But the, the content you're bringing into the brain, as soon as you connect it to the brain, the brain starts indexing that content and makes it immediately accessible through the search. All right, great. And then um, Roy had some questions um, that he's actually working on a brain for healthcare life si sciences. And if we have any research oriented and examples of healthcare. So, uh, Roy, I just sent you a link yeah. to uh, the Joint Council of Cardiothoracic Surgery's brain. That is a, a private application, but there's a fabulous video on that. Um, I also have a brain on Science Heroes, so I can send you the link. But Matt, if you want to point out where that is on the site, and also example brains um, on the brain.com forward slash apps, um, that gives you some nice brains to work with. And then also we have built-in templates for those of you getting started. Um, so Matt, if you want to cover, uh, just show everyone where they can actually go ahead and, and either, either import some of our built-in bra uh, template brains in the Brain 8, that would be great. Great. Well, as Shelly mentioned, here is a really great video that you can watch on how the brain is being used um, in the field of healthcare, research, education. It's a fantastic um, uh, case example of the brain and uh, a really amazing brain that you get a glimpse into in this video. That's available on our website. Shelly shared the URL. You can find that in our community section under the recorded event archive. Um, and you can also, also reply to your invite. Because I set up this webinar, that'll come directly to me, and I'm happy to send you that link as well. And actually, John just wrote in that he has a DNA brain. Oh, that sounds cool. Um, oh, cool. And he's going to check if that's public. So, John, yeah, email me that link or uh, put it on the question, and we can get that out to people. And then speaking of that, Matt, maybe you were going there anyway. Um, if you want to go to the webbrain.com explore tab and you know sure. give, show people where they can access Jerry's brain and some other published brains. I know we have a very popular brain on acupuncture there and uh, some other scientific oriented brain. And Jerry's brain has quite a big section on life sciences as well. Yes, yeah, so if you go to the webbrain.com slash explore, this is where you can access publicly accessible brains. Um, and at the top is Jerry's brain. So I'm going to launch right into Jerry's brain. There's other examples uh, that are frequently updated uh, down below. Here's Jerry's brain, and uh, I challenge you to find something, uh, a topic or an interest, a uh, hobby that you have that Jerry doesn't have any information on because really everything is there in this brain. It's continually growing. And Shelly, I'm not sure if you have a thought count. Last time I heard we were – uh, closing in on on half a billion. I know we're over 250 million thoughts. Is that correct? Or no? Uh, no, thousand. Uh, the links are in the thousand. millions, <laughs> but yeah, 280,000. And Matt, if you just want to use the search to do health or life sciences real yeah. quick, we can actually see. Uh, it'll be a little bit slower meeting, but uh, it'll give you yeah, an idea of how you can actually and, uh, start searching. Absolutely. But there you can see in a, a brain with with uh, with this many thoughts. Uh, how quickly it brought back the uh, the search results. So I can just go on video sharing for health, uh, which falls under a video sharing area in the brain under file sharing and free media. An interesting way to, uh, you know, approach uh, sharing information that's health related. And look at all the different examples he has on, on video, specifically video sharing. Um, so it can take you in a completely new direction and uh, find out, even more information that you didn't even know existed about specific topics that you're interested in. And finally, the, another thing, Shelley, before we, I forget that you mentioned, is that we do have some built-in templates. If mm -hmm. you're just getting started, so referring back to the folks that had questions about, you know, I'm just starting out with the brain, uh, what can you offer in terms of, of training uh, or brain experience to get familiar with the product? Create a sample brain and start playing around with the technology and maybe – Add your information into that or just use it as a sandbox so you understand better how to create thoughts and edit thoughts and add attachments. But when you're creating a new brain or in an existing brain, I can click on File to import a template brain. Or from scratch, I can say File, Create a New Brain, and select from this drop-down list. 
So we've got some different uh, brain examples there. I'm going to go ahead and select education and say uh, my new my new education brain. Go ahead and select that. And it's actually going to pre-populate this brain with some um, uh, really great thoughts and topics and, and areas that are specific and geared directly towards uh, um, education. So it's also going to, going to add thought types, link types, uh, uh, thought tags, and so forth that I can utilize for further identifying my own criteria and my own thoughts that I'm placing in. So th here we go. Right from scratch, I already have a brain where I've got areas to enter in uh, my student network, class organization, career information uh, to follow up on after my education, finances, and so forth. So topic-specific brains that are built right into uh, the brain for you to create a template from is a, a very helpful way to uh, get familiar again with the technology. All right, great. And then final question. It came up earlier and it came up again. So Jacques, we cannot ignore you. Uh, it has to do with Excel files. And Matt, this might be something we speak oh, yeah. to, or if you have one available, but Jacques' question er, uh, earlier than he, and he, he come, came right back at us. So uh, again, uh -huh. he's jumping up out of the question queue uh, where it's all Excel. First of all, he wants to know if all Excel files will be indexed. Yes, every file that has linguistic word content, we will index. So whether that's Excel, um, PDF, Word, um, even stuff that might be attached in Access or a project, that all gets <coughs> indexed and searched in the brain. So you have that wonderful search, and then you can move to the visual interface. So that's really great. And then next question on that is, how can such a file be transformed into a new brain? So this is really cool. This goes back to our importing options, where I said I'm importing that folder, and there's other importing options. One of them is to import from Word or Excel. So with that, I will hand it over to Matt, and I'm, we're going to end on this and I, for some of the newbies, you know, you might, I don't know, this might be more of an advanced <laughs> question, but again, we, we just can't ignore Jacques. So here we go, Jacques. I'll let Matt cover there's, that one for you. There are so many different features. You're right, Shelly, that we didn't get a chance to cover today. More advanced features, different types of importing from different file sources. And this is one of them. And, and Jacques, I believe you asked this question earlier. I'm glad you uh, uh, stayed on top of us, so we did bring it up. Um, but as I mentioned, a properly formatted Excel spreadsheet, uh, a uh, tab delineated uh, Word document works well. Uh, but here I have Excel, and notice I have this little hierarchical structure of people that are alive, people deceased, uh, that are what I call green people, so environmentalists, and a little brain uh, that I'd like to create from this structure that I've built in um, Excel. So I'm just going to copy these cells and notice also, let me copy these onto my clipboard first. There it is, copy. So I've copied those on my clipboard. Notice I'm using some special characters as, as well, a space and then a dash. You'll see what that does in a moment. Uh, I've got a pipe down below, William Morris. Then see the pipe symbol, furniture, or favorite, sorry. Uh, uh, there's a web link, there's a dash. So William Morris, that's a good one. A couple of different examples of what's going to happen with his thought when it's created in the brain. I've copied those cells and I'm gonna jump over to the brain. I've got an exam coming up on uh, studying these historians. Right click and I select now paste outline. The brain already knows oh, I've got an outline on my clipboard that I'm interested in bringing in and retaining the data structure so that uh, by dropping down a cell and over that creates child thoughts. So under green people, I've got people that are alive, people that are deceased, uh, let's go to William Morris, and here's the web link. So that links directly to the Wikipedia page for William Morris. And let's take a closer look. I have some notes on William Morris, uh, a famous quote of his that he used. And on the Thought Tool tab, um, that pipe symbol allowed me to add a label. So again, I can search for favorites. Anytime I put pipe, space, and then some text, uh, that'll show up there in the label. So I can search for all my favorites in a much larger data structure. So a lot of different examples you can use. And as I mentioned, um, I'm happy to send you a copy of this sample Excel spreadsheet so you can sort of cherry pick the features out of this to use in your own data structures to create something in Excel that you can then import into the brain. 
All right, great. And uh, Jacques, again, I mentioned that we do one-on-ones for more advanced knowledge mapping. This is if you have a spreadsheet and you want to work with someone in support or show us what you're trying to do, you know, we're more, and hap- more than happy to, 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 to dive into that a little bit deep, deeper with you on a one-on-one, uh, you know, complimentary support call. So with that, uh, great session, great questions. And for those of you still on the call, thanks for hanging in uh, 16 minutes into overtime here. We're going to close today's session, but just a reminder that we do have the uh, 101 class tomorrow at 10 a.m. and every Friday. Um, Absolutely jump in on that. And on February 25th, we have a nice, a very cool class. It's a little bit more uh, creative and whimsical. It's called Visual Storytelling. Uh, it's where I'll go into my writer's brain. Matt shows off his Shakespeare brain. So for those of you, um, we've covered sort of basic uh, nitty-gritty on file management. But if you want to, um, you know, look at some of our more creative applications, I encourage you to, to sign up for that. And, of course, meanwhile, we'll have the one on ones every Friday. Um, You can get to all those uh, links to the webinars off the brain.com homepage. They are in the uh, lower right hand corner or you can email us and we're happy to send you the link and and get you signed up. And with that, I encourage all of you to close those folders and open your mind and uh, now move forward into the brave new world of networked oriented file connections. And Matt, any other final words of wisdom before we close? Close this this very in depth session on file management that we've had with everyone today. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And again, a wealth of resources available to you on the website. Sign up for a 101 or watch some own, uh, some of the tutorials that we have available at your own pace. And of course, we're always there for you at support at thebrain.com. Feel free to contact us if you have any further questions. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day managing files. Hope to see you on future Brain Technologies web events. Thanks, everyone.